The Formula Ford is the classic single-seater racing car experience. More future world champions have started in Formula Ford than any other type of racing car. But there's one behind me with a number plate on it. Sometime last year, some people at Ford with a great sense of humour decided to put their new, very interesting, turbocharged, one-litre, three-cylinder engine into a Formula Ford and then bolt a bloke called Nick Tandy into it and come to the Nürburgring. Somehow, he managed to do a 722 around the ring in that thing. In road-going spec, the motor is pushing out around 170 horsepower, down from the 205 Nick Tandy used to set his silly lap. The engine bay is more crowded than an Indian train, and underneath all that plumbing is a three-cylinder motor displacing just one litre that's normally found in a Fiesta. The power boost comes by running a pair of new ECUs and a larger turbocharger taken from the 1.6-litre EcoBoost motor. The internals are completely standard. At a steady 75 miles an hour, Ford claims it will return 57 miles per gallon, but no one actually cares about that. They want to know how fast it is. Well, Ford claims a 158 mile an hour top speed in 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds, which is fair enough when you consider it weighs around 500 kilograms. This car is completely road legal. It has indicators, fog lights, even an electric handbrake. And it also has a laminated letter from the Ford Motor Company explaining as much wedged down inside the chassis, just in case you get stopped by the Polizei. <laughs> So, before we get the track, we might as well try it on the road. Now, I never thought I'd say that about a Formula Ford. One of the most overused phrases in motoring journalism is it's a racing car for the road. More often than not, it isn't a racing car for the road. It's a road car that's been ruined to make it feel like a racing car, or rather an interpretation of what someone thinks a racing car should feel like. But this Formula Ford is genuinely a racing car on the public highway. And that makes it extremely exciting. Because to have a car that responds like a racing car on the street is something that most people never get to experience. It's so immediate, right. It's also one of the noisiest cars I've ever driven. As the boost rises, you can't hear yourself think. Good God. Everything is so compact and you are so connected to the vehicle. That's what I think makes it a step beyond an Atom or a Caterham. I mean, really, a Caterham after this does feel like an S-Class Mercedes. It's just tiny. You left foot brake because there is no room to do anything else. I have to say, this new sequential gear shift that the Formula Fords get with an automatic flip on the downshift is a joy. I think anyone that buys one of these, should for build any, might struggle to match Mr Tandy's 722 around the ring. But as a way of going out on a Sunday morning and driving in a manner that will make you feel more alive than any other car, I'm not sure it can be beaten. It's an experience that you can't replicate. It is a proper racing car. Perhaps the most proper racing car of all and it has a number plate. Ford, I implore you to build some of these and sell them. As for the engine, well, I've got 170 horsepower today. Quite a long way down from the 200 they can squeeze from it. I can't imagine what it's like 200. Turbo noise? It's nuts. I've not driven a Porsche 935, I have driven a 962, and this is the closest in sound. Heavily turbocharged, and obviously half six cylinders, it sounds about the same. I get to do some really silly things in this job. This is right up there. It's bonkers. Absolutely! 
drive with a helmet on, drive with a helmet off with some shades on, and if you do 30 miles an hour, it feels like you're doing about 700 miles an hour. <laughs> 